Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to What's Barking Local. My name is Jerry Miller. It is great to be with you. What's Barking Local, the vision, the brainchild, the hard work and sweat equity of Patty Zeller. She is the businesswoman, the entrepreneur, and the evangelist behind Animal Connection, just a fabulous <laughs> melting pot, the water cooler of everything positive in our animal community. Today's guest is going to be Linda King, and we're going to welcome her in T-minus mm, about 60 seconds. Yeah, so get some so. positive commentary in there about Linda King. Yeah. Before we do Judah two shot oh, and yeah. let's welcome a lady that needs no introduction oh, Patty how are you <laughs> we're good we're good it's been a big week it has been a big week it's been a big week so far give us a snapshot oh my gosh the entire store has been turned upside down reorganized left side right side because we got a new double fronted glass freezer I saw I that mean, on Facebook we now have eight freezers of raw food in our oh. store eight Freezers. Count them. Eight. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really cool, isn't it? That is cool. Healthy stuff. Got to have the healthy stuff for dogs and cats. Um, yep. You are just continuing to improve animal connection. We try. Every, Every day. day. Every day. Yep. Um, give us a snapshot of what we can expect with those freezers. Oh, my gosh. Well, we've just got a lot of... Uh, new foods that are coming. We're going to the international global pet market next week. And then we also have some things from our friend Kathleen Kiernan at Primal. Uh, she's been on the show before and she arranged for us to get this fabulous freezer. And not only that, she offered to fill it for us. I mean, come on. I Can't mean, say no to that. That's right. $1,200 <laughs> worth of frozen food in my door. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. So, and it's not just meals. It's things that you can add to your bowl. I mean, to any brand of kibble, any kind of dry food, we're talking things like bone broth, goat milk, um, little morsels, vegetables, uh, mussels, I mean, fish, any things like that. You can just add like a little tablespoon to make your bowls better. And um, cat is just super generous. I mean, Oh, we can't say enough about Kathleen. I love it. I love yep. it. She kills it on this show. She does. Now, we're going to miss you next week. You are. Well, I may be, I don't know. I don't know if I can stream in or not, but I am at the Global Pet Show, the world's biggest pet trade show. Six football fields, Woo. over 3,000 vendors. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of hoofing to do, but this is where I find a lot of our new things and go see trusted suppliers. And so our buddy, Mary Burkles. Love Mary Burkles. That's right. She's going to come on the show and <clears throat> take take my chair and talk about caring for creatures and things they have going on there. And it's it's going to be a great show. We love Mary. We love Mary what she does. Mary Burkholz is going to fill in for right. one week and one week only. Correct. She is the president and founder of Caring for Creatures. She is. Um, yep. Patty has mm -hmm. kindly welcomed her to the program. Uh, just mm. like you have kindly welcomed Linda, and we will get to Linda. Yeah. Before we do, uh -huh. what's coming up besides oh. this trip you have? We have, have just a few little things that are going on this weekend. You know, we like all those National Day promos. Well, it's National you Walk do. Your Dog Day on Saturday, and it's National Dog Biscuit Day on Sunday. So we've got some specials and freebies in the store. And then the big deal is the following Sunday, the, I mean, excuse me, Saturday the 29th. You know, it's leap year, right? We've got a leap day on the 29th. So come have some crazy fun at Animal Connection. We have got the prize wheel to beat all the prize wheels. It's got everything from free dog washes to free nail trims to 29% off your total I purchase. Like that. Yeah, you can just fill your bag and spin the wheel, and who knows what you're going to get. Uh, a couple of people, uh, if you purchase something, you are automatically entered in a year's worth of treat bar or a year's worth of dog washes. Wow. So yeah, so Saturday the 29th, you're going to want to save all your shopping for Saturday. Saturday for Every the 29th bit. at Animal Connection. Yep. Every I don't know bit. if you noticed, already <clears throat> 560 likes yeah. on that one right there. I think we're going to eclipse a new record, and yep. you have the record yep. on I Love Seville, the cute dog from Dog Fest. Excellent. That's right. That cute dog was in the store today. Really? Yeah. You April, did a photo shoot today. Eight, well, that, we had the other dog coming in for grooming. Okay. April, the one, the one that is the clone of the Dog Fest dog. So, oh. in fact, we, I think we're going to do a promo for Dog Fest with that dog. Well, a video promo. You have your friend Binos Bustamante watching from the neighborhood. Yay! Kamal. All right. Um, I think it might be time. 
Yeah. To welcome Linda King. And before we do, Lucy Moneymaker says hi, oh, Linda yeah. King. We also <laughs> Is have Brannigan watching? Linda Swooza. <laughs> I might be messing your, your name up, Linda, but hello. Welcome to the program. Carol Silverthorne also welcome the show. The show is yours, Pat. Nice. Well, uh, anyone that knows me knows uh, that my two favorite breeds are Chesapeake Bay Retrievers and Irish Wolfhounds. I've been lucky enough to have both of those in my life. And I met Linda years ago and, and just drooled over your Irish Wolfhounds. And please, can I pet them? Because they're just such beautiful, stately animals. They're just very special. So we're going to welcome Linda King. She and her husband, Art, have a kennel in the Earlysville area, Ardress um, Irish Wolfhounds. Uh, she's from Pennsylvania. She's been showing for a long time. She's comp- confirmation, obedience, uh, all breed clubs, uh, Charlottesville Kennel Club, board members. I mean, she is active locally, nationally, regionally. I mean, she is an active woman. So let's find out what all you do. Linda King yeah. on the show. <laughs> Ellen Kroll says, hello, Linda King. <laughs> lovely. If you have any comments or perspective you'd like to re- relay to Linda, just put it in the comment right. section. Or just say hi. How about this? <laughs> Who's Linda King? What is she all about, That's baby? Right. <laughs> Well, I know one thing that's going to be added in my home. All the, when you're talking about the freezers, yeah, my dogs think toppings are really important. They are. There's no such yeah. thing as putting a bowl down that doesn't have some little treats on it. <laughs> so we'll be visiting. All um, right. <laughs> but I have always been an animal lover. Have always had dogs. And when I went away to college and was dreadfully homesick, mm. I was would go to my brother's. Um, place where his roommate had a wolfhound and I'd leave him a note and say I'm taking Felis for a walk because it made me feel oh. better <laughs> and, and that was the beginning of the end um, right. that was from that point then um, it was I, I had met my husband we started we said well, we might need one of these guys in our house mm-hmm. and and so that was our, my first wolfhound was in 1977 uh, and I've done therapy work. It's kind of what you were saying, Patty. I've done right. lots of different things because they're they're wonderful. Frankly, as all dogs are, because we 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 pick a breed that suits us, mm-hmm. and then they get incorporated in the things that we do and that we love to do. So so with that, um, while I do compete with my dogs, the most important thing is just living with them. Yeah, and it really is. They're nice hearth rugs, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, so with that, um, I have lived in Pennsylvania, then to Alabama. Now I've been in Charlottesville since 1987, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, and really enjoy doing many different things. So I guess ask me more, and I can tell you more. Linda, is it Souza? Am I yes. saying her? Okay. Linda says you could not have anyone better than Linda King on the show. She is <laughs> absolutely right. amazing. Grace in Earliesville says she loves the Wolfhounds and we love her. Um, give it a like and a share on any of the pages you're watching. I believe you have six different states watching you on the program. Well, Linda's out on the West Coast. She, where's Linda? California? Yes. I believe San Martin, California. Ellen Kroll, I think, is watching Washington. in Washington. Yes. So you get the West Coast watching you right now. All right. <laughs> Jump in here about why you invited Linda to the program. Well, I just, you know, these wolfhounds are very special. They're a very unusual breed. They're very, uh, I found them to be very mysterious. I mean, they really have a very soulful presence about them. They are very regal without being snooty. And they're just warm and loving, and they love to lean on you. And um, I have to illustrate this. I mean, I found that when my Fergus was very excited, this is this is the tail whack. This is really excited for Wolfhound. <laughs> I just love that. I mean, he was very calming influence um, for me. And so Chesapeake Bay Retrievers, yin Yang. I mean, <laughs> wide That's open, true. you know, low keyed, or you know, but they're you know they can wake up a lot when they're coursing and running around fields, and oh boy, they're they, hard to keep they, up with. They have tremendous boosts of energy. Yeah, but and and will certainly and love will run for the sheer joy of running because it feels good. But the other part is if when you come in, mm. they will they they were also bred to lie by the hearth. Right. And so when you come in, they will just quietly rest and mm-hmm. repose and, and be very calm. They are very sensitive. Um, you know, I can have a youngster who I'm thinking, 
oh, I didn't bring here because what, what could we knock over? Yet, if we go to a nursing home, they totally get it. Yeah, they, they, completely, they pick up on that energy. They completely read mm -hmm. the scene. We're showing them on screen. Is that your couch? <laughs> There's your fireplace <laughs> over there. Uh, we got this Irish wolfhound taking over the joint over there. All right, why don't we do this? Keep the pictures coming. Judah Wickhauer is our director. Yes. He's putting the photos on screen. Introduce the pack, okay. the names, right. the personalities. Okay. So... So this is just on a field walk. I, I have a big field that um, it's all fenced and we go out and, and hike and run and took a, a, a photo op. So that's me with my guys. Um, I can't see what that is. Sure. Well, you just tell us. You don't even have okay. to look at the pick. You, okay. tell us, you tell us about the pack. So, so we're, we're assorted ages. Um, my oldest wolfhound is almost 11, which... It, that's, that's very old for a wolfhound. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, every, wow. every breed has its reasons that you could not live without them, and every breed has its reasons that you take pause and wonder if they're right for you. Right. And, and the giant breeds do not have long lifespans. Right. Um, for me and the German Shepherds, it's the hips and not the large lifespans. You know, for you, yeah. it's not the long lifespans as well. That's right. You, we're not going to... But so, so my, my old girl, she still... She was in that picture with the... Um, the, the running the, the field. So she's doing great. Um, but I uh, lost my train of thought there. Introducing the pack. So thank you. Yeah. So, so then I've, I, I do breed occasionally, um, but truly occasionally. My last litter will be three years old in June. Um, this is just me. It certainly does not speak to good, good management and good health care of your dogs. There's no there's no reason not to breed more than one time. I just won't. It's I, right. It's just my. Well, you know, I found that out about uh, when we were looking for an Irish wolf, and we found that out about breeders. Number Very one, protective. They right. They don't have big litters, and they're spoken for in advance. And they interviewed me just as as much as I was looking at their bloodlines and finding out about their temperaments. But they, boy, I was really interviewed to see if I would. Yeah, good match. And 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 wolfie. instead of being put off, what yeah. I would hope is that people feel um, boosted by that to know right. that they will always be supported. That the the person responsible. That yeah, that that that, that someone's going to stick behind them the, the entire life of their dog, mm -hmm. and and help them with through any questions that they have. So so it is important to to have a relationship with the breeder. Right. And um, so so I do have. My youngest is like the, I think the eighth generation going back mm -hmm. through my lines. So that's very heartwarming to me. Um, it's heartwarming to me when we're successful, of course. But, um, but, but then um, that's, that's not the, that, that is not the, the all, all to end all. Right. Although people do talk about, you know, why the whole idea of there are, there are there are dogs that need homes. What are you doing? And and the wolfhound, the wolfhound historically goes back to, um, I think it's 300s AD. It's an old breed. Mm -hmm. um, now, in the 1800s, the breed was almost extinct. Really? Why? Um, there, it was the, the, the time period of, of what was going on politically, and but there, Captain Graham was a gentleman who said, I'm not going to lose this breed. And and did some crossbreeding to try to save the the temperament and the the look, the type of the Irish Wolfhound, and and I think that's really important. So you never breed lightly. You breed with um, health in mind, with what they look like, what they act like. You you want to mm -hmm. you want a Wolfhound and a lot um, of integrity. And yep. mm -hmm. but you also um, but you want to preserve the breed. You know, I I, I do want Wolfhounds to always be here. So, Me too. <laughs> yeah. So, so with yeah. that, you you breed um, judiciously, but 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 we do. Nice. And then, like you said, it's so great to have them outside and doing what uh, they do. I can't think of a whole lot of, of things that are as joyous as watching one, you know, coursing, running around in full flight. I mean, just they are they're spectacular. You just wonder, wow. You know, let's let's do keep this line going. Yeah, you know? they yeah. they are unique. They we were yeah, talking they're about graceful. this off air. She, you have six. Yes, six Irish wolfhounds. Yes, and you mentioned and I'm gonna throw this to you. I'm gonna pass the baton <laughs> to you. Uh oh. People ask, where is my Irish wolfhound kennel? Uh -huh. And you said. 
You walk in the front door of my house, and ta-da, there's the kettle. That's nice. Take it over from there. <laughs> um, they're very much my family, and, and, and so I definitely, uh, I share my home. They share their home where it's the same home. Uh, <laughs> and um, I have, like I say, there's there are doggy doors um, downstairs that go out into. I've got acres that are fenced, uh, so they, yeah, that the, the, there is no there there is no kennel in my home. It's right. it's just our home, and that's really important. I mean, like last week when we were talking about the field hunting dogs. I mean, it's important to have not only have your place set up so that if you buy if you get a certain breed they can exercise in the way they were meant to exercise and if they have a job allow them to do a job that they were bred to do and i've got to yeah. say that that to be to be cautious of there are amazing homes amazing that have the best care mm. the dogs have the best exercise they have tons of attention tons of love and they do go in a kennel sometimes right. so you know, I, it's it's not an all or none. It's no. not so. No. So I, I wouldn't want to give it an impression that well, our, if, our German shepherds go at night. They sleep in a crate in a kennel. They yeah. love it. They're they're dead animals. That is their yes. den. Yeah. yeah, they and look forward to going so, in there. So there's yeah. you're not marginalizing. I yeah. know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And right. just you know, because it would be unfair to say, oh well, I guess you don't think that's okay. That's not what I'm saying. It's whatever is right for that particular environment. Yeah, right. for you and your and your guys. So and give us a snapshot into the personalities of the pack. The personalities of the pack are that they um, they love each other. They mm -hmm. they really they when you see them sleeping, they're always touching someone. Really, they're, you're not going to see them off by themselves. They'll be touching another another one. Um, they so they they are committed to each other, and they are they are bound to each other, um, but that you will also see who takes the lead. Um, it's, there'll be times when I'll say, come on guys, let's go, and we're heading out to the field, <laughs> and, and, and somebody will start to run, and I'll go, oh wait, and they'll be looking back, to, you know, are you coming, are you coming, but looking for whoever, not just me, but it may be one of the other dogs who right. is their leader. So I have a youngster, and I say that she's a complete shadow of one of mine, because at this point, and she is young, she's only six months, but she, she doesn't quite have an independent thought yet. And so <laughs> so she is, she's totally at this shadow who just, <laughs> I am your mirror image of wherever the, the but so they, they, they love each other. They, they have individual personalities for sure. There's, there's some are more impish, some are, are more tender hearted, just as in people. But, um, but they, 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 they so a wolfhound, all the, the, when you look at the whole continuum of all the behaviors you might see, mm -hmm. from one end of the spectrum to another, a wolfhound is still going to be more alike to, a, to each other than they would be to a Chesapeake. Right. So right. even though it runs the gamut of these differences. <laughs> so I see yeah. that in my guys. There are these differences, yet they still totally kind of fit that mold of the wolfhound. I would ask With you Minerva something. being the exception, my my rescue. Yeah, I want to ask you something about their mannerisms. Someone that uh, also bred Irish wolfhounds told me when we were thinking about it, and they were talking about uh, the different mannerisms that they have, they, and she said something like, always watch your dog when they come out in the morning, because they want to do the same thing or go to the same places. They're like, like habitual. Like, they're going to check out the yard the same way uh, every time, and if they don't, you need to be raise your eyebrow and wonder, you know, what's up? You know, what's, what's wrong or something different? And uh, I always like watching them move because they don't move curved like a horse would. They don't curve. It's like this, 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 this. And I, but because um, they, they that, work, they'll work in it. Yeah. Yes. But is that true about them doing the same? The creatures thing? of habit. Yeah. yeah. It really is. They are yeah. creatures of habit. Yeah. And um, it doesn't mean that you can't throw them. You know, again, because they tr they're trusting. Right. So if I bring them into a new situation. Um, that being a creature of habit is not going to make it difficult for them right. to make an adjustment because they're going to, but they, they are going to trust me to take the lead with that, to say, we're good, I know we're safe because we're with you. Your nice. buddy, Neil Crowder, watching the show right now. Hey, hey, Neil. Hey, Neil, it's watching right outside <laughs> Richmond. Charlottesville Kennel Club has a message for you. And guys, if you have a message for Linda or you ah. just want to say hello, just type it in the comment section of any of the 12 Facebook pages, and I will pass it along to Linda. A comment like this from the Charlottesville Albemarle Kettle Club. 
Linda, you are rocking this interview right now. <laughs> That's from the Kennel Club as we speak. They're watching. There you go. This I, comic I, I owe someone. <laughs> Mims Mathers. Oh, my goodness. Uh, an old high school friend. Giving you the <laughs> heart emoji right there. Mary O'Malley, watching the program, says you're doing a great job. Nancy Caroline, welcome to the program as well. We have a couple questions that have come in if you'd like. Okay, and then I want to share with you some info about the Kennel Club things I, coming up, too. I oh, would yeah. love to. Yep. You know what? No rules here. We can do whatever you want. It's, um, it's your show. I just, yeah. don't, I just don't want to forget. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Chris has this question, and he's watching an old trail in Crozet. I've grown up with wolfhounds. I've talked to my wife and our family about how, how caring and how sympathetic and how tender wolfhounds could be. Okay. She's very nervous with our young children and wolfhounds. Any advice that you can offer that I could pass along to my uh, better half? So, wolfhounds were in my life before children. And um, I can still picture, this was when we were living in Alabama, and one of my favorite stories was down at Panama City Beach. And we're sitting, this was off season, so we're just, the, we're at the beach with the dogs, everybody's just hanging out together. And my little toddler son, um, as, as he would, picks up his sand bucket and off he goes, toddling up and plops down. And without even, you wouldn't even notice. It was like a shadow. There goes the wolfhound. Up, follows, flops down beside him. You know, <laughs> yeah. so, so that's, that. that's what happens is they, um, they and, and again, people talk about, oh, they're so big. How do you deal with that? But they're not jumpy dogs. They're not, exactly. Right. They, they know who they right. are. So they're, they're really pretty great with kids. I, I taught for many years and, um, used to bring my dogs to school with me regularly. And that was always, it was the best behavior management ever. It's like, you guys, if we really hang in and really work hard on this, <laughs> then Aaron can come tomorrow. Oh, oh man. man, we kicked. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, Nancy Caroline and Patty, I'm going to pass the baton to you. A uh -oh. couple comments we're going to relay here. Nancy mm -hmm. Caroline, your cousin, said, yes. I'm sending much love to cousin Linda from Portland, Oregon. Nice. Jessica Hill, I'm friends with Linda's son, and he has passed on so much advice to me on raising my pups. That's from Jessica Hill in the comment section. Richard Swisher, I'm watching from a sunny beach in Florida right I now. I know, that's sorry, oh. And oh, Linda, yeah. you are doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> was, was there another question about wolfhounds? We do. We can get oh, to those questions, yeah. but I don't know if you have anything. No, I'm, I'm rocking with it. Let's go. This yeah. question is from Tim in Charlottesville. Any suggestions for um, someone that has a small backyard and is interested in wolfhounds and not really a ton of space to exercise? Again, they, they are a quiet breed, so that for many breeds that would be an issue. They will do as much or as little as you're willing to do with them. So if you have one of those days where, sorry, I just let you out and don't have too many of them, that would be unfair. Right. But, mm -hmm. but to that, any dog. Right. right. But that's fair enough. But get, to get them out on walks. Take them, take them. We've got so many incredible places around here that um, are beautiful hiking trails that dogs are welcome. So get out and it's good for both of you. That's right. And, you know, and uh, like you said about the backyard, I mean, you know, like we said with Neil last week, I mean, you know, that's a great place for you to learn your, your training. Your recall starts right there. You know, there's so many opportunities you can do if, you, if you're just not into it that day and you can just do a, a few things like uh, just to reinforce your training. Yeah, it, they're for okay sure. with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've got to say a downside to the person who's asking about young children is that there, there are no guarantees in life for any of us, for our dogs, for us. Mm -hmm. We all understand that. But, but a giant breed does not have a long lifespan. What are we talking? Well, what, if everything's going well, you're talking eight to ten years. Mm -hmm. But the statistical average is more like six and a half because the bad things happen to good people. Um, the wolfhounds, and there is no line, don't blame anybody. We, again, the breed was almost extinct. We have a small gene pool. It can happen to any wolfhound from anywhere in the world. But the breed does get bone cancer and heart disease. Those are kind of two big issues. So here I am with my young family, and then I have a four-year-old dog who becomes terminally ill. Can I deal with that? And I, right. think, I think it's a really important question that you have to ask and, and, and say that, that these are the, the balance that I'm, I'm willing to take these risks and we're willing to live with this together or not. Mm. And not is okay. Right. 
exactly. I mean, you know, for, to be around something that's just, it's just, you just have to experience them. I mean, they're just a special kind of energy, but I would rather have a shorter time with something that's really dog. cool like that, yeah, yes. than, a, than a long time with something that's maybe not as, well, not 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 as special, but you know, not as special as that, really. My friend who I was right. saying when I was in college, who whose dog got me through my homesickness, um, he talked about that with, you know, they may not live as long, but every day is quality. There, some of the dogs That's that may exactly live to right. be 16, the last years may be some pretty tough geriatric times where really we'll found you don't go through that. Uh, yeah. Melissa Morris, welcome to the program. Thank you kindly for joining us. Uh -huh. Charlottesville Kennel, Charlottesville Elmore Kennel right. Club. Yeah, we want Thank to talk you. about that because we've got you. some yes. great we do. Uh, activities coming and we're going to have other representatives from the Kennel Club on April 1st, you know, to go into this a little bit more. So, so the, why the don't you Kennel give us a Club preview? Is a, is a busy right. group. We're not a really, we're not a, a very large group and we welcome people to join us. Our meetings are always the second Wednesday of the even months. And you don't have to have a dog, right? No. Right. You just there have you to love dogs. That's right. Um, we always have some type of program. But um, we do two. We 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 do two shows a year, and shows is like when you watch Westminster on TV, when people. So one is in Fredericksburg, and one is in Doswell, uh, one in January and one in October. So those are things that's just kind of fun to go and watch a dog show and get to see it all for yourself right. and see lots of different. Breeds. And are those bench shows or no, are those ring, no. those are ring shows? Right. Yes, right. you can you can just go and during beforehand, um, anybody could contact me. I can let them know of shows that might be coming up and how to find schedules if there was a breed they wanted to see and how many might be there. This is a great way to go and meet a breed. I mean, you're not, you're not going to have a whole lot of meeting time before someone goes into the ring, but maybe afterwards you can go and find them you and just say, always ask just them. go ask questions. You right. just always ask, is there a time I'd love to talk to you? Right. And, and, and the old Dr. Seuss, 99.9% .9 of the time, people are wonderful. <laughs> yeah. so. Dog people love talking about their breeds. Yes, they do. They do. Um, uh, and and the, the part about talking and visit, I, I think that if anybody's thinking about any breed of dog, that they should go and... and that you, if you see them in a place like a show, that's great. But remember, these great big open spaces, you really want to go visit them at people's homes and see what it looks right. like and feels like to say, how would this feel in my home? Right. So I, I, I think I recommend that for any breed. Um, so we do our two shows a year. We also do, which is coming up the end of this month, and I need to skip the dates here, um, <laughs> our agility trial is February 29th and March 1st, and it is at Walnut Hill Farm in Riva, Virginia. Nice. It runs about 8 to 5. Agility is a really fun thing to watch. For all ages, all shapes, sizes, All shapes, kinds. all sizes. Right. Don't have to be a purebred. Right. Dog, the training is, you've got to be in great physical shape because you're doing some running. <laughs> but um, I know some of our members sent a couple pictures um, for, from the agility trials. Judah's going to put them on screen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, thanks. So, but you, they have an, what they call an A-frame, which is where the dog runs up and back down. Um, they're running through tunnels and, and uh, going through what they call a weave pole. So, uh, lots, the dog has to be agile and fast. And it's, it's exciting, it's fun, and everyone's welcome to come and watch. Unless uh, that video that I saw online of the English bulldog doing agility, which is oh. a riot. He's just like, do-do-do-do-do. Yeah. You know, just... <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so so know that know that you're welcome to come out to, to Riva on the, the 29th and the first. And people can find about out about that on the Kennel Club page? Yes. All right. it's, it's called okay. Walnut Hill Farm. Got it. Okay. And um and then we will be back. Um I don't That's know right. I will be back, but but you're we invited will, back. Thank you. <laughs> um because our obedience trial, which will be in Fishersville at Expo Land. Right. Nice. Love that spot. And that is April 4th and 5th. Our club is the fifth. Um, it's another club that sponsors the fourth. But if you want to come and watch, and this um, is a new, uh, this is kind of a new thing because I remember back in the day, Charlottesville Kennel Club had their own show at Foxville. But now it's so much easier to partner with another club, and you know everybody shares the work and the fun, and it makes it easier for you guys. It's yeah. Foxfield was fabulous, absolutely yes. gorgeous and fabulous, and but. Um, 
but you also have to financially be able to to of run course, it. True. Yeah. So so some of it, it is cheap. Some of it is <laughs> picking these sites and working with other clubs enables right. us to do more and continue on. And Fisher's Hill is covered, right? Yes, it In is. It's indoors. It it's yeah. indoors. Yep. So um, so that's obedience and rally that's coming up. We also do scent work trials. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be teaching a handling class for confirmation this spring. Ooh. We haven't set the dates yet, so that's yet Where to come. Where do you teach the handling classes? The Early Zoliano Hospital is, they are the most wonderful, gracious, lovely people yes. to, and they have a beautiful fenced in area in the back and let us use that. Nice. I know. What's the difference between, uh, tell, tell people what they do if they don't know, uh, between the obedience trial and the rally trials? Okay, the obedience is, um, they're similar and yet not. In, in obedience, obedience has been around, I'm going to say forever, I'm not sure how long, but forever <laughs> in my time. world. Um, and, and it is teaching your dog the, the basic um, healing, sitting, standing, you know, following your direction um, in a very structured way. Rally is, is a little, I would call it, this is my interpretation, more user-friendly for the dogs because it's a lot more interactive where mm -hmm. you can, instead of saying, um, one command because your dog should be paying close attention and tuned into you, which is not a bad thing. It's all that, that I enjoy mm -hmm, it. I, mm -hmm. I think it's good too. But but the rally, while you're working with them, you can say, "Come on, come on, come on! Yay, let's go! You're doing yeah. great!" So <laughs> yeah. so there's a little more interaction with with you and your dog. Nice. Um, this is undoubtedly your passion. I can tell it's contagious. Well, good. Um, when you're is. talking about it, you're just like bright and full of positive energy here. Um, talk about this, maybe passing the baton on to the next generation. So important. Um, and it's one of the things that I don't know. We t I, I'm, on, I'm on the board for my national club, the Irish Wolfhound Club of America. And we, we talk about, you know, who, who are we passing that baton to? We always do a junior showmanship class at mm -hmm. our shows. And, and we hope that we'll have some kids coming along. Yeah. You know, and, and also... <laughs> So how do you do that? You do it by um, some of these classes where hopefully some youngsters will come in and, and get, get the bug. Uh, and, and sometimes like the bug can be for any and all of these different things that you can do with your dog. Are there um, we also have a lot of people who do a lot of therapy work in our club. Are there any opportunities for maybe a, a kid that loves, loves, loves dogs, can't have a dog at home for right now, but can learn how to handle a dog? Is there any type of opportunity like that, or do they really need to have their own dog? Yes, there's opportunity like that, and that mm -hmm. become, that comes with relationships with people. Right. You know, if, if, because, so somebody comes and says, I can't right now, but I sure would love to meet you and your dogs, and might, you know, and of course. Um, in fact, mm -hmm. this was many years ago, but there was a, a young girl who um, we, we ended up co-owning one of our dogs with her and getting her... Um, her junior show number because she wanted to learn to show. Oh, nice. And so, yeah. yes. That's but, great. But it it kind of comes with that developing those relationships. So, yes. So and then the other part is, is with, the, with the mentoring is if you, whether you place a puppy or you just know somebody who, you know, if, if you met somebody today who had a Chesapeake um, or, or wanted a Chesapeake, yeah, <laughs> you would be there to help them along. Oh sure, <laughs> and and that's the key is is that is that people have to be giving and but if you love it, it's, it doesn't feel like right. Giving. We have those people at the store. I mean, people that know that I like Chessies. They come in. My dog's doing this. Is this what a Chessie does, or you know, or, or whatever that is, or is it a Chessie trait? You know, I'm 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 the Chessie guru. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, one more question we want to get to. Um, this question's from our buddy John Hunt, Judah, and he's ah. watching in Keswick. And oh boy. he asks this question, um, is it safe to say that of all your Irish wolfhounds that you've had, Linda, that you've had one that stands out or has stood out more than any of the others? Wow. How many have you had total? Oh, I don't know. I really would have How to. How about really... ballpark? Because, because remember. Because yeah. you have six right now. I have six right now. And remember, this goes back to 1977. Okay. More than 30? Oh, yeah. Whoa. More than 50? I'm not sure. I'm really, you're, you're. <laughs> I'll get back to you. On okay. That. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a lot of dogs. As one stood out more, and you're not picking a favorite because I know you're hesitant to do that. You love them all. Oh my goodness, yes. So well, if Rita Mae's watching, there better be a favorite. Has there one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, of course, it's Juju. Rita oh, yeah. Mae's Juju. 
<laughs> um, Just kidding. <laughs> you know, when I, I can think of one who she she was a great partner in the show ring. It, she didn't just go and go, you know, I know what to do, okay. She, she, we worked together. We really had this little partnership thing. I did probably the most winning with her than I've, of all my dogs, even though I've had some lovely, lovely times. Um, and, but she's also, again, a favorite story. So we were in Maryland she won the hound group that day. That's a big deal. That is a big yeah. deal. So we come home, and of course, you know, she's been at a dog show. She wants to get out and have a run. So we go out the back field, we're down to the river, and she's in the river swimming. There you go. And the next morning, we're loading up and heading back to Maryland. Oh. <laughs> and we said, so how many other group winners were swimming in the river today? There you go. I love so. that. So, you know, so it is, it's, it, I think some of that favorite is, is the ones that, um, there's animal connections, but there's those special <laughs> connections for, for whatever reason. And if, if, if we had a few more hours, I could give you a story like that for everyone. Yeah. You actually could. I, I know you could. Yep. Yeah. You, uh, this has been easy. You know, the show yeah. is supposed to be 30 minutes. We're 40 minutes in. Hasn't it flown by? Yes. Yes. Well, you've got lots more to talk about when you come back in April. That's okay. a testament Woo-hoo. to you, Linda. You did <laughs> well, so you. well Excuse today. Me. Thank, thank you for coming well, and sharing the you. story. Yeah, talking about dogs is easy she to do, isn't this it? Up. This is her doing. Well, thank you both. Thank yeah. you no, both so no much. No worries. <laughs> um, next week, we're going to miss you. Oh, I'll, I'll Skype in. We're going to miss you. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you want me to face... Uh, can I... FaceTime or That's something That's a question in? for our director, Judah Wickhauer. Yeah. I, get, I, I should get, at least FaceTime in and say I hi. I have the easy job of just sitting here and talking with people that love I dogs like I do. I understand there's a message board that you can... <laughs> I could. Yeah, you I could do that. That's, That's right. happening right now. See, yeah. um, good job, Linda King. That's what Linda Souza says. Am I, what's her last name? Souza. Souza. Yeah. She says, great job. You did a great job. She's a, a uh, dear friend. Give it a like and a share, guys. This is what we're going to do for today's program. If you're watching and you want to see Linda King in action, go to animalconnectionva.com. Correct. Animalconnectionva.com. Yep. Right. We will syndicate today's show across um, the I Love Seville network, which is 17 Facebook pages, 17 Twitter accounts. We have the third largest Instagram in the community, <laughs> a newsletter that goes out okay. to 130,000 inboxes every morning <laughs> at 11 a.m. We'll turn it into a podcast on iTunes. And this is all powered by this phenomenal person, Patty Zeller of Animal <laughs> Connection, for 18 plus years. Working on it. 18 years. Starting mm-hmm. 19. Um, yep. Starting 19 yep. years. She's been Hard to believe. the ringleader of positivity in our community <laughs> with animals, guys. We sure try. <laughs> Support Animal Connection, the people that are doing good things for That's our community. That's right. Shop local. Shop local. Exactly. Shop local, guys. My name is Jerry for Patty for Linda. And Judah. And Judah. And Judah. What's barking and local and, ready? Bark, Bark local. local. That's right. Bark local. Have a good afternoon, guys. Take care. <laughs> That's right. Good job. Oh, hey, my gosh. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was Wasn't that fun? You did so well. Piece of, yeah, piece of cake. Yeah, piece of cake. Piece of cake. 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, She's a pro. Blather, blather. <laughs>